Hello, I'm Chuck Phillip with South Alabama Home Inspections and welcome to another edition of Southern Home Talk. Um, what we're looking at is the bridgehead and actually the entrance to Spanish Fort Estates or the exit in this case, as you can see people leaving out of it. But if you were, if you lived in Spanish Fort Estates, uh, you would most likely come out this interest, entrance here if you were going to Mobile and take a right going that direction and that's the causeway and it takes you all the way to Mobile and going back to what I said earlier you know where this red light is that's called bridgehead and the reason why it's called that is because back in the 1920s when this causeway was built it was called the Cochrane Bridge and this was the bridgehead to it so that's why it got how it's got it got its name and one thing you have to be careful of as well you see those cars that are parked there at the red light uh, sometimes they will run that red light uh, coming up this hill and what it is I think they're looking at the aspect of that light up there is being green and not really seeing uh, this light that's right there so just be mindful of that coming out of this neighborhood but you got to be careful with this sort of issue anywhere you go and so uh, directly across over there is uh, the first shopping center I've got an episode on that if you want to see what's in it also, too, if you took a left from here, uh, you could take a quick right where those cars are standing. And that's Highway 98, which will take you to Fairhope and Daphne. And if you was to keep going to the left, uh, that's Highway 31, which runs east all the way to 181. They, all, they also call that uh, north and south 31, but really it's more east from Spanish Fort to 181. And so anyway, uh, they also call 31 uh, Spanish Fort Boulevard. So just know that some of these roads uh, have more than one name. So uh, 31 is, is Spanish Fort Boulevard. Uh, the Causeway, as most of us old heads call it the Causeway, but that can still be considered Highway 90. And so the, the, the roads that go from here to Mobile would be Highway 90 or the causeway there and if you wanted to go to I-10 you would go where those cars are going in about a uh, I guess almost a mile up that direction you could get on I-10 there and so anyway I'm parked at the Marathon gas station at the entrance of this neighborhood and also over there that's Wilson service it's no longer a gas station uh, but it, they do perform car services there so anyway, I'm going to do an episode on the businesses here, but I'm going to fire up the car uh, so we can kind of sort of see what it looks like going through Spanish Fort Estates. I've been in this neighborhood all my life, since 1962, and uh, this marathon here used to be a golf station. It's run by Charlie Swindle, and... Um, so there's always been a gas station here as long as I've been alive. And Wilson's has pretty much remained the same as well. I used to walk up here when I was a kid and get a soda. So anyway, we're on Spanish Main now. And this was the first real estate office right there. Uh, that little biggie office was built by the Fullers uh, to have us their real estate office. The way this neighborhood got started was uh, their dad... Uh, had all this property back in the 1920s and it was developed into a golf course in the 1920s and of course uh, the Great Depression hit and the golf course closed and so this basically just turned back to woods and stayed woods all the way up until the 1950s and that's when his sons started a real estate company and they bought the property from their dad he wouldn't give it to them and so they would buy parcels of this and then develop it and then buy more and so that's kind of sort of how this neighborhood goes uh, back there at the entrance that we came in uh, those houses start in the mid 50s and the further you go north on Spanish Main uh, the newer they get uh, we're still in the 1960s here at the bottom of the hill uh, so we got a stop sign here and we're gonna keep it rolling up uh, Spanish Main goes all the way out to the second entrance or exit, however you want to call it. 
I got to be really careful going up this hill. It's a pretty steep hill. Uh, the more importantly, there's houses on both sides of this, and you know it's kind of hazardous for them backing out onto this road you know, because they can't see the traffic coming up or down it. So just be careful, you know, going up this hill or down it. And you can see uh, these houses here; they're still uh, probably getting late 60s now and early 70s. A lot of these roads, Signal Hill, uh, have Civil War names like General Canby, General Gibson. They were two uh, Confederate generals that uh, serviced this post up here during the Civil War. And so we're going to keep rolling north at this stop sign here. That's Ranger Road there to the left. Uh, the, one of the reasons why the Confederates built their fort here, there's actually several uh, built in Spanish Fort uh, was it was one of the highest points on the eastern shore and so they put a large naval guns at Fort McDermott to fire down onto the Blakely River on the Union ships uh, back then the only way that Union ships could get to Mobile was to come up the Blakely and Spanish Fort itself uh, was still on the maps at the time the Civil War began and so that's how it Spanish Fort got its name. It was just built on the maps as that because this used to be there was a Spanish Fort here back in the late 1700s and the, even the Confederates uh, remodeled it some. It was kind of sort of still standing a hundred years later uh, when the Confederates started remodeling their old fort, or their old fort. There was, a, there was three forts in this neighborhood during the Civil War. Uh, there was Red Fort, there was the Fort McDermott and then the old Spanish Fort and so we're still heading north we start to see the houses getting a little bit newer we're in the 80s now uh, some early 90s especially when we get to this most northern part of this uh, this entrance did not exist until probably the late 80s These are like say mostly 90s, these homes in this part of the neighborhood. You can see they put rocks there, that's a good move. We have a lot of moisture here guys, I'm telling you, that's, that's one of the things I have to inspect for the most is those sort of issues. Okay, we're coming up on Highway 225. Uh, 225 runs north and south, so you'll be going north that direction, and that's also the entrance to the newer part of Spanish Fort Estates back there, which I'll do a separate video on that. And if you was to go to Mobile, if you lived on this part of the neighborhood, you would take a right here, uh, this 225, and about a mile and a half up, you would take a right, and that would take you on, get you onto the causeway going to Mobile, or left onto 31, which would take you to uh, toward the schools, the middle schools and the high schools. It's doing a U-turn, so coming back into the neighborhood from the back side, So, you know, I would entertain the thought of actually buying some of these older houses in here. I, I, like I said, the house I live in was built in 64, and I've inspected quite a few homes and uh, from all different age ranges in this neighborhood. And for the most part, these older houses have pretty good bones. Uh, they really do. They only had a handful of builders back in the 60s and 70s, and they cared about their work. Uh, the lumber was also better back then too as well I mean because it was old growth lumber which has a much stronger uh, tensile strength than this new lumber for sure and so I would absolutely entertain the idea of buying an older home uh, we started running out of that old lumber around the mid 80s and around 1985 is what I remember we ran out of it I used to sell this lumber back when I worked at uh, a building supply company so, you know, the only thing you probably be sacrificing is maybe some newer amenities, but a lot of these houses, these older homes, have been remodeled over the years, so it's possible that you can have the best of both worlds. And another thing, too, the longer the home has been sitting, the more history it has of how well it's built. So, you know, that kind of goes in its favor as well. You know, if you have a really new home, we, it doesn't have a really a history to go by. Okay, you can see... 
uh, some of these historical markers that have been placed all through the neighborhood uh, to kind of show you uh, where some of these events took place during the Civil War. Uh, it was a battle that lasted 13 days, and uh, it was about 36,000 Union troops uh, against about a little less than 4,000 Confederates. And so it was amazing that the battle lasted as long as it did. But if you have a metal detector, there's a good possibility you'll find um, mini balls or Civil War bullets in your yard. They just fired them in here by the tens of thousands. And, you know, this is up back here at the top of the neighborhood, up on the top of this hill. It even tells you the slow, steep hill ahead. I uh, took my wagon down this when I was a kid and wiped out, and I think I still got scars from that. I never did it again after that. So I'm going to try to exercise caution going down it as well because I know these there are people that live here, and they may be pulling out trying to get out. Uh, there's also a creek at the bottom of this hill. Uh, just know that we do have snakes. Uh, probably the one that you're going to find that's venomous is going to be the water moccasin. Uh, they're going to be around this creek, but just know they don't have to be there. They can actually be you know, hundreds of yards away from this in, in your yard. And But there again, they're not going to bite you unless you fool with them, uh, try to kill it, or step on them. Uh, what you've been told about them is wrong. I've, I've got episodes on that. I'll show you, show you that as well. Okay, now we're coming back up the Spanish Main Hill. The reason why I wanted to kind of sort of do this is to kind of point out uh, this intersection up here that we're coming to. Uh, you have to be careful at this one as well because it makes more of a Y. And you really have to make your stop a little bit past this stop sign because you can't see over the hill and you can't see back this direction either. And so that's why you have to kind of pull up before you make your move out of this. Uh, that's uh, Fort McDermott right there. It's owned by the Sons of Confederate Veterans of Mobile. And it's a really nice, they've done a good job of getting it cleared out. And so if you ever want to go and just get a good exercise, you can actually walk that as well. And if you hear uh, large booms uh, in the month of April, uh, they do reenactments up there uh, I believe they try to do them every year, so that's what you'll be hearing if you hear those. If your windows start rattling, hearing large booms. Okay, we're turning on to Confederate Drive, and this is another road that makes us a, a sweeping uh, radius turn that comes back into Spanish Main again. Uh, these are the houses I was telling you earlier in a video uh, that date in the 1950s. So these are going to be some of the first ones that were built. Now, uh, this home here on the right was built just last year, so you can even have newer homes, you know, in this part of the neighborhood. And, of course, now we're looking back at Mobile Bay, that house there on the bluff. I've been told at one time was uh, 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 Willie Nelson owned that house, but that's just what I was told. And there's another one of those markers. If you want to freeze frame this, you can if you want to read it. So I'm going to just keep going. I don't want to make these videos too awfully long and get you bored. See the flat roof design? Uh, there are several houses in this neighborhood, especially on the older part, uh, that have that flat roof design. He was one of the architectures, architects that designed uh, the Presbyterian Church. And some of the houses in here have that flat roof design too. There's one. In fact, I think that's where he lived is in this house here. Uh, Fisher, I think, was his last name. There's another view of Mobile Bay. See the I-10 bridge there? We're, all, we're getting along the back side of Fort McDermott now. There's another historical marker right there. We're at the back side of Fort McDermott. That's a Japanese home right there. That was built, I think, in the late 50s. That's a cool place. Like I say, there's some really nice architecture in this neighborhood. And a lot of these houses have been remodeled. And, you know, so if, if you want a quick way to get to Mobile, uh, Spanish Fort Estates is probably the best location you're going to get. And so we're fixing to take a ride at this street here. This is 
uh, Cannonade Boulevard. And uh, there, there again, uh, these streets got the, a lot of Civil War names. Uh, that's uh, Blakely River Road. It dead ends down there, but that's also where the old Spanish Fort is. It's on a bluff back there. I may do a history tour on this on my channel as well. But the main thing I wanted to do is just kind of show you where, uh, how these roads kind of go in the old estates and give you just a little bit of a history of it. And so I hope this has been somewhat informative, guys. You know, go and check out the playlist, Spanish Fort, if you want to see more of this. And thanks for watching.